<laughs> All right, you guys. Um, you know, I was telling Ashley, Pastor Ashley, before um, I even, we even talked about me giving a message or what I'm going to give a message on. And I was telling her how I really wish that God would give me a, a sweet, sugar, candy-coated message for <laughs> his children. But that's not the case. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, but, and I was also telling her that, you know, when I'm, when I'm preaching, it's because God already slapped me across the head with it, you know, oh already, yeah. Yeah. so Amen. I've already heard this for myself, I've already been convicted, you know, I've already, I've already felt the heat of this message, and I still do when I read, I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, but, um, so yeah, so today we are going to be talking about the serpent's tongue. Now, I'm going to... I'm going to give two examples of the temptation to lie. And then I'm going to get into the word. So, recently, my car stopped working. My car stopped working, and um, I had to use my husband's truck. So, we just bought a $300 battery for my car. And it was working fine for a little bit, but then it stopped working again. And so I'm like, you know what, $300. I'm like, can I just use your truck? He's like, yeah, sure. And so I ha he, he works 30 minutes out of town, okay? <laughs> I work 30 minutes out of town the opposite way. And so not only that, but I also have to take both of my kids to school and daycare. And so I'm not used to waking up two hours earlier than needed, so I started to be late, right? And you know, I clock in on my phone. I clock in on my phone to, you know, clock in to work, clock out. So I, it's easy for me to access my clock in. And first day, Monday, I was late. I'm like, uh, it'll be all right. Second day, Tuesday, I was late again. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get this going. I need to get up earlier, right? Yes. Wednesday comes around and I'm late again. But I'm only five minutes late. And I'm like, you know what? I'm only five minutes down the road. Uh, I could clock in right here and nobody was going to know, you know? And then I hear God say, that's lying. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But God, I'll clock out five minutes before I leave so that I'm not stealing nobody. He said, I'm not, I'm not talking about stealing. I'm talking about lying. Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm like, oh, okay, Lord, I'm scared of you. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'll just wake up earlier tomorrow. And so... Praise God, I feared God more than I feared man because I was like, God, what if they say, well, she don't know how to get up on time. Mm -hmm. She don't know how to get to work on time. Mm -hmm. She needs to get up a little earlier. What is she doing? She's slipping away. She's falling away. And I'm thinking, God, what, what if they think this about me? And I'm scared of what man says about me, right? I'm scared of what man, and so I'm, I'm going to get into the word of what it says about that. But so I was thinking about fearing man more than I feared what God thought about me. But praise the Lord, by the grace of God, I was able to be honest, right? So praise the Lord. Now, on the other hand, there's falling into that temptation. Now, there's there was a specific person that was very intimidating to me. I was very intimidated by this person. And it was like anything that I would say or do, they would explode. Mm -hmm. And there would be chaos. And I'm like, I don't want that. I want peace. I want peace. I don't want chaos. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I want peace. And so this person asked me, you know, I was doing something, and this person asked me, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, what if they get mad? What if they get mad? Okay, you know what? What if they think this? What if they think that? I'm just going to tell them I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. And I, I lied. Mm -hmm. Because I feared man more than I feared God Come at that on. moment. Come on. And you know, God talks about the captivity. In, in Ezekiel, he talks about the captivity. And at that moment, that little foothold, that rebellion, that fearing man more than fearing God, left that foothold for Satan to put his foot in the door and then swing it right open. Shame, condemnation, guilt, all these things are flooding in. And I'm like, all because I feared man more than I feared God. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening in the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> These pastors, 
they're scared of what man is going to say about them, so they don't call out their sin. They don't call out their sin. Well, what if they leave the congregation? What if they stop tithing? Do you fear man or do you fear God? Yeah. And so it was, it was, it was perfect what the Lord was um, telling me at that time. In Ezekiel, if you will turn um, to Ezekiel chapter 8 with me. Verses 3 through 12. Uh, you can give me an amen when you get there. Amen. 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 Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> so it says, and I'm reading out the King James, so there's a lot of thou shouts. Okay. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of my head. And the spirit lifted me up between earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. To the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. And he said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here? Now for a second, I'm just going to say this. The house of Israel is the, the Christians of nowadays, the church of nowadays. So, that I should go far off from the sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he turned me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel, portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jazaniah the son of Shapham, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? <laughs> every man in the chambers of his imagery for they say the Lord seeth us not the Lord hath forsaken the earth so I got here what an idol on your on your notes what an idol is so this is an object of extreme devotion something that you um, you basically worship you are devoted to this thing. And in the house of God, they had idols. Now, if I, which I'm just referencing this. You don't have to turn to it. But in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Verses 23 through 24. God says, this is God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 23 through 24. He says, Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. And so... When he's, he's speaking to me about the idols in the house of God right now, currently. Come on. Currently. Let's go. <laughs> now, if you would turn, if you would turn to me, if you would turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, we're going to see what these idols are. Amen. 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 Okay. I'm going to read uh, 1 through 9 if you want to follow me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. 
Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle of the day of the Lord. Now listen to this. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, The Lord saith, Albeit I have not spoken. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. What is the idol of the church nowadays? It is vanity. It is vanity. Vanity is excessive pride in or admiration of one's own appearance or achievements. When you are worshiping the idol of vanity, you're thinking, man, what if they think this about me? What if they think that about me? What if they think I'm too harsh? What if they don't like me because I'm preaching against their sin? What if they leave the congregation? What if they stop, what if they stop tithing because I'm preaching against their sin and they don't like it? They don't want to hear it. You're, you're worshiping yourself. You are worshiping yourself. You are worshiping the idol of vanity. Come on. Come on. This is just the word of God. No, no. <laughs> this is just okay, the word of God. I feel like we broke the rule. Praise the Lord. I hear you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And this is what God is. This is an abomination. In, in Ezekiel chapter 8, he says, this is an abomination, and you will see greater abominations. Mm -hmm. Jesus, help us all. Yes. He says, they have seen vanity and lying divination. They are lying. And this, is, this goes to um, verse 10. Look, oh, this is so good. <laughs> this is so good, y'all. This is really good. Okay, look, listen, he says, because even because they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace yes. they're saying that there's peace and there's no peace they are being led to hell they are being led down to the pits because people are prophesying peace and there is no peace Come on. Come on. oh and you know and i was talking to one of the sisters at um at a, the saturday at the conference and you know, I was telling her we were talking about the the scripture where Jesus says, "I come not to bring peace, but a sword." Mm -hmm. But you know, Jesus is a prince of peace, right? But he also says, "I leave with you peace, not the peace of this world." Oh, People on. got it confused. People think that the peace of this world is the peace that Jesus came to bring. No, Jesus came to bring peace spiritually. Yeah, if yeah. you think, if you think that, oh well, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. What if they don't like me? What if they say I'm being too harsh? You are fearing man more than you are fearing God. Come on. Come on. Now in chapter, I mean, in verse 16, he says, To wit the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, say the Lord God. Come on. That's scary. Yeah. And this is happening today. Yes. Yes. Wow. Mm. Come on. In verses 22 through 23, he says, Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Oh my God, this is, and this is what they're saying. Oh, well, you got the grace of God. You have the grace of God. You're okay. You will inherit everlasting life. The blood of Jesus covers all sin. They're promising them life. Oh, Jesus, help us. But also Paul says that, that if, if, you, if you willingly sin after receiving the knowledge, there is no more sacrifice. Come on. Come on. Jesus, help us. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and
and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thank you, God, for intervening. Thank yes. you, Lord, yes. for intervening. I, 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 okay, I'm going to tell you a bit of my testimony. I grew up Baptist. Mm -hmm. I grew up Baptist, and I got, I, you know, I got filled with the Holy Spirit at seven, and um, very hyper grace. You know, um, you can sin; it's okay. You know, um, God's we, God's a gracious God. God's a merciful God, and so. I was like, all right, bet. On the go, live in sin. Fornication, um, gossip, slander, stealing, lying, drunkardness. I'm not sober because the Bible says be a so of a sober mind. So I'm drinking, I'm smoking weed. Now I'm getting into harder drugs because I'm, I'm going down deeper and deeper into the pit of hell because my shepherds are leading me there. They're saying there's peace and there is no peace. Come They're on. promising me life, but I'm actually in debt. Yeah. Come and on. so thank you, God. And, and this is where oh, I just, I, it touched me in my spirit because he said, he said, therefore, ye shall see no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand. Yes. And ye shall know that I am the that I am the Lord. And it's so crazy because God intervened and he saved me. He turned my life around. Yes. Now I'm living a holy life. Now I'm living. I'm not saying I'm perfect. A wise man, a wise man falls seven times, but he gets back up each time. Yes. So I, now I'm turning away from my sin because God intervened. He said, "I will deliver my people." He delivered me out of the hand of the wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. Yes. Come on. It's good. <sighs> and it's so crazy because He says, "And ye shall know that I am the Lord." And it's like now that I'm living for God, and I'm living for the almighty God, not the fake God, the lower case G God, but the almighty God, and people still don't know that God is the Lord, that Jesus is the Lord, that God almighty is the Lord. They think, they're like, oh, well, she's too legalistic. Uh, no, she's too judgmental. No, she's too hypocritical. Come on. Okay, but you're about to read, you're about to see what the Lord God says about Telling people about their sin. Come on. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Oh. Mm. Now, God, you know, and, and you know, I understand, you know, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to people on the street, I'm not telling them, hey, you're living in sin, you're being damned to hell, repent. No, that's right. not what, that's not what I'm doing. But... You have to use the Holy Spirit wisdom. Come on. Yeah. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, find him. Yeah. Come get him tonight. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Tonight, in Jesus' name. Now, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 through uh, 20 through 19. Actually, I'm going to go through 21. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Mm. Wow, so listen to what God is saying. Listen to what God is saying. If you tell a wicked man, if you tell a wicked man to turn from his wicked ways, then you will have saved yourself. Yeah. But if you don't tell a wicked man to turn from his wicked ways, his blood is on your hands. Yeah. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Mm. Jesus. Come on. Again, when a righteous man do turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at your hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doeth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Well, praise the Lord, you're both saved. Man, and you can be righteous your whole life. This is what it says. When a righteous man do turn from his righteousness. So it's not like, oh, you, you, you fall once and you get back up. No. He says iniquity. 
living in sin. If you're righteous your whole life and you turn away and then you start living in sin mm -hmm. and you think you're okay because you've been righteous Come on. the whole time. Yeah. No. He says, I will put Come a stumbling on. block in yes. front of you yes. and you will yes. die. Come on. What, is, what does Jesus Tell say it. that death is? Hell. Hell. Yeah. Come on. Turn. Mm -hmm. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Lord, fire, come on. Thank you. Come on, let's talk about Jesus, Lord. Okay, if you'll go uh, with me to Ezekiel chapter 14, there's hope. There is hope. Yes. There is hope. <laughs> Jesus. So, you know, whenever I, I, I'm preaching against sin, you know, people, they go, oh my God, you're making me feel hopeless. You're making me feel, there's hope for you. There's hope for you in Jesus Christ. Now, listen to this. In Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the Lord of and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart, and put this stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them. Therefore speak unto them, thus saith the Lord God, every man of the, of the house of Israel that set it up idols, set it up his idols in his heart and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's cool. Therefore, therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, repent. Yes. Repent. And turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your face from all your abominations. Not half of your abominations, not one of your abominations, all of your abominations. Come on. Come on. All. Yes. Amen. Now, a lot of people think that repent, you know, repent means to change your mind. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had to look up the Hebrew because, you know, I, just, just to clarify, because a lot of people think that, you know, repent is something that's not. Repent is to change your mind. Okay, this is wrong. I can't do this anymore. This is abomination to God. Come on. It's good. There is hope. Yes. Come on, there's hope. There's no need to feel condemned. Amen. There's no need to feel condemned. And I was just talking to the Lord about, and I always do. I always do. I always talk to the Lord about my, my covering, um, my spiritual wellness back there. But Amen. we need correction. Come on. Amen. Where would I be without my correction? Without the people who are correcting me and telling me that is wrong. Mm -hmm. I fear God. I don't I don't want to be damned to hell forever, separated from him for all eternity. He's so good. He's he's my creator. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yes. Uh, if you would turn to me what if you turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 14 verses 12 through 20. So good. He says, The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. If I cause if I cause noisome bees to pass through the land and they spoil it so that the desolate that no man may pass through because of the beast, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver their neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Those these three men were in it. As I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. 
Or if I say, if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, save the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Now, when I'm reading this, I think of when Jesus Christ himself, Jesus Christ himself says, if your righteousness doesn't surpass the Pharisees, you will not see the kingdom of God. And in John chapter 14, let me go flip In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus Christ himself says this, okay? <laughs> if ye, now remember, Jesus and, the, Jesus and the Father are one. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Come on. In verses 23 through 24, he says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine. See, Jesus is saying, It's not mine, but the fathers which sent me. Mm -hmm. And then in, the, in Exodus chapter 20, if you, if you want to flip to Exodus chapter 20, Verses 1 through 6. <laughs> it says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. And keep my commandments. And I, I'm referencing this passage right here because Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Now, what's the opposite of love? Hate. Come on. And he says, he will visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation that hate me. Come on. And... Also in, in Ezekiel, he says, why, why do y'all use this proverb that says the, the father eats sour grapes and their children's teeth are bitter? <laughs> it's because of this passage right here. God said he will visit the iniquity fathers and the children to the third and fourth generation who hate him who don't keep his commandments how do you know that if you love the lord you will keep his commandments amen generation <sighs> and so this i'm like okay actually let me let me read ezekiel because i'm like <laughs> my god i love my children i love my children my son and i'm like God, I don't want my son to bear my sins. Come on. Yes. Amen. I have to change. Yes. I need a change. I need to repent. I need to turn away from my wicked ways because if not, their teeth will be bitter. Yes. Because I'm eating the sour grapes. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Tell it. Come on. Man, that's good. <laughs> that hurt me. Man, that's good. Come on. Oh, Amen. And so in Ezekiel Jesus. chapter 14, verses 21 through 23. Amen. 
So, okay, let's just read this. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sore and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast? Mm. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you. That shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and their doings, and ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. Mm. And this were and and this is where I'm like, okay, God, I have to be that example mm. for my children. Come on, I want them to be a part of that remnant. Yes. yes. This is what he says. He says, I, I behold, therein shall be left a remnant mm -hmm. that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Jesus. Jesus. Now this reminds me in uh, Ezekiel chapter 9, if you will turn to Ezekiel chapter 9. This is scary. And this is why I'm like, people, they take, they take God so lightly. Mm. Oh, and I did too. I'm like, I can't. And I, and I asked the Lord, you know, I had to ask the Lord, Lord, give me compassion. Lord, fill my heart with some compassion, Lord. Because I'm like, I was there, you know? I'm like, I was once there. I once was thinking. And I kid you not, I remember um, there was, and I, and I think I think God for this person, I, don't know, I can't remember who it was or where I was. I think I was probably like at a bar or something. They said, if, no, for real. They were, they were like, if, if somebody came in here with a gun and said, do you believe in Jesus Christ or not? And they, and they were, you were going to die if, you said yes. Would you say yes? I'm like yes. Yeah, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's drinking a beer. <laughs> but I can hold one hand. <laughs> yeah. No. Mm -hmm. I would have not said yes. I didn't fear God. Right. I had no fear of God. Come on. I was living in iniquity. I was living in sin. Yeah. That was a lie. I wouldn't have not said yes because I feared man more than I. I Jesus. worship myself. Mm. More than I worship God. Jesus. Mm. Come on. So I thought I was okay. I thought I was okay. And this is why I'm like, God, please give me compassion. Lord, please give me compassion because that was once me. Come on. And so in Ezekiel chapter 9, this is so good. This really brings the fear of God upon me. And I was just talking to my, my sisters in Christ about the fear of God. You know, you can be a doctor, a lawyer, a, 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 a politician. But if you don't have the fear of God, you have no knowledge. Mm, yeah, no. Yeah. You have no wisdom. Oh, come no on. Yeah. Oh. Come on. <laughs> I'm like, you have no knowledge. Yeah. And these people, they think that they're accomplishing these things. And, and they might for a season. But what about when you die? Yeah, come on. It's all going to die with, with you. Right, yeah. And and this is where the fear of God comes in. If you have, if you do not have the fear of God, you have no knowledge and you have no wisdom. I'm sorry. This is just what the word of God says. Come on, come on, preach it. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in hand. So this is God, and these are angels. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was upon from the cherub, where was, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the man, that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So, like I said, the, this isn't this isn't real men going and marking people's foreheads. These are angels, spiritually marking people's foreheads. Right? 
And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And being at and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. So this is where it, it comes into place. Judgment starts at the house of God. Come on. Mm -hmm. Judgment starts at the house of God. Yes. He says, start with the ancient men which were before the house. Mm. Mm. That's good. Come on. And he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, I fell upon my face and cried and said, O oh Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel and thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Jesus. Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. Jesus. And the land is full of blood. In the city full of perverseness. For they say the Lord hath forsaken the earth and the Lord seeth not. As for me also mine eyes shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. But I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold the man clothed with linen which had the ink for by his side reported the matter saying. I have done as thou commanded me. Jesus. No, this is serious. And you know, there's natural disasters going on right now. God's allowing it to happen. There's bodies upon bodies floating in flooded waters. The wrath of God is real. Yeah. The wrath of God is real. And I'm telling you, it's coming. And it's here. Yes. Now, this real this is what I'm talking about. This put the fear of God in me. And uh, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus Christ himself says this. So this is why I like to reference the, the New Testament if I'm preaching on the Old Testament because a lot of people, oh, that's Old Covenant, that's Old Covenant. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> some in tea. Come on. So okay. Yep. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Now in Matthew chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse 28, Jesus Christ himself says this. If you believe in Jesus, you believe what he says. Come on. Yeah, yes. amen. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Woo. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Come on. He's, Jesus is literally saying, these, okay, if you, just like Paul, Paul was literally persecuting and killing Christians. And Jesus is saying, don't be scared of that guy who can come decapitate you. Don't be yeah. scared of that guy who can torture your body until you die. Instead, fear God who can throw your body and soul into hell, come everlasting on. fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus Christ himself says this. Come on. Where is the fear of God in the house of the Lord today? Come on. Yes. Now, this mark is not only for the Old Testament. Now, I'm going to read the future. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for your prophecy and your word. Yes. Now, if you would turn to Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. <laughs> now, this is John writing what he's seeing in heaven. Now, I believe the word of God, and I believe, I heard, man, there was somebody, and it was a pastor, and he was like, he was like, well, John was just probably on, you know, he was just probably hallucinating, or he was probably like, I'm like, yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I'm like, this is the word of God. Jesus says, man shall not live off of bread alone, yes. but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. Every word. And also, I'm like, this is the word of God, and I want to live by it. Amen. Now, in chapter 7, verses 1 through, six, 1 through 3, it says, And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, 
upholding the four winds of the earth, and the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Wow. This is so beautiful. It's so amazing. This is why I'm like, and I don't ever want to get too comfortable. I don't ever want to get too comfortable. Like, oh, you know, it's been it's been one day. I haven't read my Bible. It's okay. You know, mm -hmm. you know. I, I'll preach. get to it tomorrow. I'll get to it tomorrow. Preach. Oh, God's calling me to a fast. But you know, I have this this lunch. They brought me lunch at at, at work, and it's free. <laughs> Come it's on, free for real. The donuts. <laughs> the donuts. Come I'm on. Like, they, they brought barbecue. My favorite thing. Come on, Jesus. Yeah. No, we Come have on. to not get comfortable because we need that that seal. We need that Good. mark upon our foreheads. Good. And I'm like, God, I need this mark. I mm -hmm. need this mark. I need this mark because in Ezekiel chapter 9, he says those that cry and weep yes. for the abominations. When I'm, when I'm in my secret place and I think about my family mm -hmm. that are living in sin, mm -hmm. Come on. I weep. Mm -hmm. Because I know that if they were to die... Tomorrow they wouldn't make it. <sighs> and so this is how I know <laughs> that I got that mark. Because I weep and I sigh for the abominations that the house of God are committing. And this is the house of God. He's not talking about the 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 atheist and the Satanist. No, he's talking about the house um, of on. God. Yes. 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 Come on, and oh, you got these pastors, they're like, well, God is a gracious God, and we got the blood of Jesus, and love covers a multitude of sin. Where is the fear of God? You know, your punishment will be worse because you're teaching this stuff. You're teaching, you're sharing peace, peace, you're promising life. No, Jesus says that God himself says there is no life. You're prophesying peace, and there is no peace. Come on, come on. And so this is the word that the Lord has given you. Amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. So I just want to encourage everybody with this message that stop fearing men. Stop fearing men. Fear God, the one who can destroy your body and soul in hell. If God is telling you to tell that person to repent, tell that person to repent. Because if not, their blood will be on your hands. Amen. Jesus.